Cape Canaveral, Florida, from Launch Complex 17 here at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, many of NASA's robotic planetary missions blasted off. Soon, the two massive towers that once cradled Delta II rockets will be torn down. A new tenant, Moon Express, a tiny company with far-out ambitions, is moving in. Next year, the company, with just 30 employees, aims to be the first private entity to put a small robotic lander on the moon and perhaps win dollars US 20 million, 26.27 million dollars, in the Google Lunar X Prize competition. It is investing at least dollars US 1.85 million to renovate decades-old buildings here. The company is transforming a parking lot into a miniature moonscape, and will also set up an engineering laboratory, a mission operations room and a test stand for spacecraft engine firings. The federal government has announced the creation of a national space agency. EU sources and British newspapers report that the UK has agreed to pay around 50 billion euros to settle a Brexit divorce bill. The standout listings traded on the ASX captured at key moments through the day, as indicated by the timestamp in the video. A peek inside Sydney's first five-star luxury hotel to open in almost 20 years. After months of political debate, Malcolm Turnbull has announced a royal commission into the banking sector. Exploding tenfold over the course of 2017, the virtual currency of Bitcoin has reached an all-time high exchange rate of $10,000. The digital currency has seen an eye-watering tenfold increase in its value since the start of the year. A banking commission of inquiry could be on the cards despite the government's opposition, with Nationals MPs, crossbenchers and the Labour Party in favour. The federal government has announced the creation of a national space agency. Moon Express would not need all of these facilities if its only goal were to win the Lunar X Prize. Its second spacecraft aims to land in 2019 near the Moon's South Pole. A third, larger spacecraft in 2020 is to gather samples and then bring them back to Earth, the first haul of moon rocks since the Soviet robotic probe's return in 1976. But these plans almost came to a halt a couple of years ago, not because of technological challenges or financial shortfalls, but because of an international agreement known as the Outer Space Treaty, which is marking its 50th anniversary this year. The treaty spells out what countries are and are not allowed to do in space. Its crowning achievement was stopping the nuclear arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union from expanding into space. But the agreement may now be getting in the way of entrepreneurs with plans to push farther and faster into space than national agencies like NASA. Get the latest news and updates emailed straight to your inbox. By submitting your email you are agreeing to Fairfax Media's terms and conditions and privacy policy. Before it was something really, really hypothetical, said Fabio Trochetti, a law professor at Harbin Institute of Technology in China but now there are groups that are really serious.